Hello and a very good afternoon to all our viewers who are joining me in this live interaction session of News 9 on Facebook as well as the YouTube page. Well, as we all know, Sanjana Galrani and Ragini Dwivedi's jail stay is set to continue as the hearing on Sanjana's bail petition has once again been postponed to October 24th. But what caught everybody's attention in today's hearing is the fact that Sanjana's legal counsel likened Sanjana's case to Rhea Chakraborty's case and said that Sanjana should also be granted bail since she didn't possess any commercial quantity of drugs on her. Now, Hazmat Pasha, who is Sanjana's legal counsel, also observed that the actor did not have a criminal past. So, Rhea got bail in her case, whereas Sanjana continues to languish in jail. Now that the case has been likened to Rhea Chakrabarti, let's find out the key differences and also the similarities among both the cases. Firstly, Rhea and Sanjana both were arrested on similar charges of consuming and also peddling drugs, while Section 8C, 20B and Subsection 2 and 22, 27A, 28 and 29 of NDPS Act of 1985 were slapped against Rhea. Sanjana was taken into custody based on a Suo Moto case registered at the Cotton Pate police station for allegedly consuming and also supplying banned narcotic substances at parties and events that they used to organize. So Sanjana was booked under the provisions of the NDPS Act and also the Indian Penal Court. Secondly, when it comes to the uh, time spent in jail, Rhea spent about 28 days, whereas Sanjana has stepped into a 36 day as she was arrested on the 16th of September. And thirdly, Rhea was granted bail on a uh, personal bond of 1 lakh rupees. And the court even asked the actor to appear before the Mumbai police for 10 days and before the NCB, which had arrested her once a month for the next six months. But Sanjana Galrani continues to languish in bail and no conditions have been uh, uh, termed for Sanjana. Now, in order to answer a few questions surrounding this particular hearing, we have with us uh, Supreme Court Advocate Mr. K.V. Dhananjay joining us on the phone line. Many thanks for joining me in this live interaction, Mr. K.V. Dhananjay. And my first question is, now speaking about the High Court hearing today, Sanjana's counsel argued that her case is very similar to that of Rhea Chakraborty's and both of them were accused of consuming and also peddling drugs. But no physical evidence was found in both the cases so far. Rhea was granted bail and Sanjana continues to languish in jail. What is your observation? Well, uh, yes, there are certain similarities and at the same time, there are also certain dissimilarities. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't think it's really necessary for the lawyers for Sanjana to uh, draw comparison to Rhea Chakrabarti in order to make their case for bail mm -hmm. because they could always make their case for bail just like that. And uh, you see, Rhea Chakravarti's case and was heard by the Bombay High Court along with the case of several other accused. So uh, some parts of the judgment, because you, you should know that Rhea Chakravarti's brother was not granted bail, mm -hmm. right? right? So um, it's never really safe to rely on a judgment uh, when it uh, grants bail to some and then it denies bail to the others. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, irrespective of that comparison, I think on the facts that are already in public knowledge, I would like to say that uh, Ragini as well, Vivedi as well as Sanjana Galrani deserve to be enlarged on bail. Mm -hmm. I think viewers, uh, listeners should know that bail is not meant to be a punishment. Bail is only meant to be, uh, you know, a custody whereby the police can firm up their investigation. They could tie their loose ends. And, uh, you know, recently, one of the courts, that is the Delhi High Court, happened to receive this argument from the government, which mm -hmm. said that it would, granting of bail will send a wrong message to society. You know, I think that was, I, I don't remember what case it was. But in that case, the court slammed the government and said that grant of bail is, in fact, more or less a right that is available to an accused. And no court should be withholding bail as to, to send a message to any society. Mm -hmm. Society must know that bail is not meant to punish or convict anybody. It is only meant to ensure that there is an efficacious and expeditious investigation. And uh, to withhold bail, the court needs extraordinary reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look into the publicly known facts about Sanjana's case, or for the matter, Ragini Vivedi's case, I think the police have largely said that they have consumed drugs. That's now, true. consumption of drugs under the NDPS Act is in fact a you know, far lesser offense than peddling or com engaging in commerce in connection with drugs. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to consumption of drugs, 
uh, you know, it does not matter how many times you've consumed something or what quantity you've consumed. But when the police say that Ragini has consumed drugs repeatedly and Sanjana Galrani too has the, uh, consumed this or that drug, mm -hmm. then the court, eventually, the court will only be looking at a possibility of a conviction which could run to one year if the drug is, um, you know, uh, like MDMA or uh, LSD or some of those manufactured drugs. Mm -hmm. It's one year. And then in other cases, let's say cannabis, uh, which I think is the allegation in both the cases, is a punishment of six months. Okay. Now, even when, let's say, hypothetically, the court holds a trial and convicts a person for having consumed one of a drug, the punishment, as I just said, is six months or one year, depending upon the type of the drug. But then the mm -hmm. punishment, or for that matter, conviction, would not lead to jail because the law treats those who consume drugs as requiring help. That's requiring cool. rehabilitation. rehabilitation so the court would mostly drive them over back to their own places by putting them on probation and supervision so when this is a law it makes zero sense to hold up these people for months together or weeks together and i can tell you uh, you know i I've, I've seen the fir that was drawn against uh, ragini divedi mm -hmm. it was so bland and uh, if not for the fact that a police officer gave this complaint because it, in that case it was a police officer who made a complaint to the uh, police and then the police drew an FIR. If somebody in the public were to give a complaint with so scanty information, no police station anywhere in the country would have drawn an FIR. The complaint is that bland. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, when your complaint itself is so bland, you can't really build a good case to keep all of these people behind bars. Now, it's entirely possible that Sanjana Galrani and Ragini Dvivedi are, are actually guilty of the kind of things that have been said against them. Mm -hmm. But the forum to prove that is a trial. So these are bail proceedings, and in bail proceedings, there is no reason to really keep these people behind bars for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, let's come to Riya Chakrabarti's case again. Okay. When it came to Riya Chakrabarti's case, what in fact, uh, you know, she and her friends and comrades and all, the police uh, said that something like 200 grams of cocaine, sorry, 200 grams of cannabis was involved in terms of their conviction, sorry, in terms of their consumption. Mm -hmm. 200 grams or 2 kgs or whatever, when it comes to consumption, the quantity is immaterial. But it, when it comes to commerce, quantity is the uh, essence. Uh, and in this case, they talk about commercial quantity. I mean, it's not enough to say commercial quantity. They must show what is the mm -hmm. amount of seizure. I think on that the police is drawing a blank because it looks like they were not able to recover anything. Now, because NDPS is all about substances, and mm -hmm. if the police is going to build a case of trafficking or, or commerce in substances, they must recover some substance. Or if they are unable to recover, they must give a good estimate as to what is the quantity involved. I think on that front, this case will draw a big zero because nowhere are they specifying what is the quantity involved. When it, when it, is comes, to, when it comes to trafficking, Unless the quantity is shown by the police, the courts will be clueless because the law is structured in such a way that punishment will vary according to the quantity. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to cannabis, if somebody is peddling or trafficking in cannabis, there is something known as a small quantity. Small quantity is, in fact, I believe, a kg or so. Okay. So, if somebody is held with that amount of cannabis, then he suffers a punishment of one year. Okay. Now, if somebody, uh, you know, uh, much more than a kg, if he is caught up with, then he suffers the punishment depending upon the quantity. The, uh, the punishment go out, could go up to 10 years and sometimes even to 20 years. So if, some, if the police is serious about its case, it must state a number against mm -hmm. the quantity they have recovered. I think on that front, this case is a big zero. And I think eventually, uh, this case is not really going well. And... Um, the police has been trying its case in the media by slipping this information, that information. And I don't think it's a good thing for society uh, to, you know, block up, to lock up people who have allegedly consumed. Because the intention of the law is that if, you, if somebody has consumed a drug under the NDPS law, hmm. that person deserves help. That person deserves rehabilitation. Putting, locking up that person in jail and not giving a trial to him or her is never, never really the intention of the law. Now, Mr. K.V. Dhananjay, uh, the police observed that Sanjana was reportedly, you know, financing uh, all these uh, peddlers in order to get drugs for the parties. Now, how important is this factor? Because Sanjana, as uh, some of the CCB uh, clo sources close to the CCB said, that Sanjana had deleted some of the text messages from her phone. So, probably the police are having her in the judicial custody. Uh, in order to interrogate her and get more details. So, how, how much of an impact would that have on Sanjana's case in particular? Well, um, 
first of all the police have arrested her and the police must explain what was the basis to because uh, here's a deal mm-hmm. if someone is accused of some cognizable crime there mm-hmm. is no compulsion for the police to arrest uh, that person and the the, the reason to arrest um, you know the police must always offer justification for why they arrested someone the okay. fact that they have the power to arrest is not enough now when it comes to deleting messages uh, well i think uh, sanjana must be able to explain why she deleted the messages but from whatever we know not just about her but then of general public conduct mm-hmm. people delete messages all the time so mere deletion does not mean that someone in fact you know was trying to hide up incriminating material number okay. one because very often deletion also happens because you know you get a constant prompt saying you run out of space That's so people true. do delete a lot of things number one number two it's just like if somebody is ra- raided if let's say some businessman is raided some politician is raided and then a crore of rupees of cash is found it's fine so long as they can explain what oh. i mean how they came about that one crore because there is no law in this country that says you can't keep above a certain amount of cash in your house or in your residence there's no such law so if there is some recovery of a cash then they only have to explain how mm-hmm. they came about that so similarly if messages are deleted that doesn't really mean much number one number two when the police is giving this broad hints at the stage of bail that's mm-hmm. when you know that the police are you know really clueless or for that matter they are trying to build a case at a late stage now if at all the police believe that she's hit some conversations or she's had some dealing those dealings certainly will be captured in papers and records and some other material uh-huh. they are free to investigate so the question before the court will not be so much about whether she should be let out on bail or what the mm-hmm. question will be more about should she be let out on bail mm-hmm. will that hamper or hinder the investigation in any manner i think that is a area we all also must be concerned about we should all want the police to you know work in such a way that there is no hindrance to their investigation so i think that's a question for perhaps uh, the lawyers or uh, mm-hmm. sanjana can shed light on that before the court and i believe uh, that probably will be the focus as and when the next hearing is taken up i i don't think there will be any impediment to the investigation should she be let out on bail now do i know her personally no mm-hmm. do i know her ragini no but then from whatever we know about their cases, cases. in the public knowledge mm-hmm. i uh, don't believe i'm justified in saying these things mm-hmm. because i would be surprised if bail is withheld okay uh, i would not be surprised if bail is granted because bail is a default rule you know just because the police uh, want a few more months to investigate but there's another thing that we should all be asking the police which is uh, this is not the first case under the ndps law we should right. ask the police to talk about what they have done in other cases over the last 3 years or 5 years mm-hmm. all the ndps cases they have investigated mm-hmm. how many cases have led to actual conviction because mm-hmm. i basically might have some some statistic which the police might feel is very depressing and frustrating for them there is a small study that's come out which says in the last 2 years okay. or maybe 3 years most of the cases ndps cases in bangalore have led to acquittal now the these cases have led to acquittal because the police didn't do a good job they didn't firm up their investigation they didn't make the recovery of other matter their version was not credible enough so there is an acquittal now imagine all of those cases were cases in which the trial courts would have denied bail to the accused for quite some length of time Mm-hmm. uh and then the high court you know too might have denied it on the ground that charge sheet has not been filed or maybe you should wait for investigation to be concluded and things like that what happens to their life once they are acquitted who will give them back their time that they have spent in jail that's true so these are the questions i you know because it's a fact that the bangalore district court which uh-huh. conducts trials special court i think over the last 2 or 3 years a majority of cases have led to acquittal when i say majority i am told it's more than 85% of the time 85% right. of cases being acquitted that should not lead uh, anybody to believe strongly the words of the police because their their words are not uh, you know uh, more not significant the than their action and they must show with their action and they should go ahead and then investigate more people if financing is in fact a very big serious issue if a sanjana galra i think has financed uh, this well then they, they they if they can prove or not prime prime of face show that she has been involved in financing and uh, it should not just be their word it should mm-hmm. be something more than word but their okay. word because this is a criminal law i mean nobody is going to be convicted or no one's right is going to be impeded because of the word of the police they must show something in action they must if show they physical evidence the in order to convict sanjana in this particular case but it still remains to be seen whether she gets bail or not many thanks for joining me in this live interaction mr kv dhananjay the hearing has been adjourned to 24th of october and all eyes will be on what 
Sanjana's legal counsel will present on the 24th of October what his argument will be in favor of Sanjana getting bail. And whether she gets bail or not is still a big question that needs to be answered. So if you guys have liked this piece of information that I've shared with you all today, please do drop in your comments and also like, share and subscribe to News9 on various social media platforms. Many thanks for joining us.